Hey guys, Operator Drewski here, and today we're going to be going over a full-on guide of how I record and stream my footage to my channel. A lot of people always ask me this, what program do I use, but they also ask like what in-depth settings do I have and things like that. And the last video I uploaded of this was around like 100,000 subs ago, so there's a lot more people to the channel that are probably interested in this subject. So I kind of want to remake this, kind of make it a little bit better than my last episode, and cover a little bit more specifics on different codecs and different kind of uh, quality control settings as well this guide will work for anybody who is either just wanting to record some background gameplay so that when they get a cool moment in a game like battlefield or call of duty they can go and post it to their friends and show their friends or this can work for the person who wants to start an entire professional YouTube channel about gaming um, or wants to stream a lot and things like that. So this can go from all the way from the from the very novice, very just kind of casual recorders of their own games to the very, very professional enthusiast grade stuff. And again, I'm talking from the point of view of a YouTuber where I'm constantly recording videos every single day constantly streaming every few days and so this is the perfect formula for me that has worked and i've tried every uh type of recording in the book i've gone with different programs like msi afterburner gone with different programs like uh bandicam and dx tori and fraps uh there's a lot of programs out there that will cause issues even nvidia shadow play that are all have their faults but i think that this one and this kind of setup that i have is near perfect for what i do and would be near perfect for anybody trying to record gameplay on their pc so first off i'm going to suggest two different things to you guys or at least one object or two objects uh that should go in your pc if you're really getting to serious recording i I'm going to suggest a separate internal hard drive. Now, this is kind of like confusing for some people because they might go, well, I already have enough space. Why do I need a second hard drive? I already got like a two terabyte of my PC and that's enough to record footage easily. Uh, so why, Drewski, do I need a separate hard drive? Well, in my last video, if you didn't watch it, in my last video kind of covering uh, recordings and how to record on YouTube, basically, if you are recording to the same hard drive that your game files are located on, which let's say for most example, for most people, it's going to be just one hard drive in your PC. So you're going to be recording to that same hard drive. Uh, it's, it's basically trying to ask a person to read a book while writing an essay simultaneously. So like write an essay about Theodore Roosevelt and how he, how he helped on the Panama Canal, but also read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone at the same time you cannot stop writing and you cannot stop reading the paper that's that's kind of what you're asking of a hard drive to do <laughs> um, if you are recording to do the same hard drive that your game files and operating system files are on so that is why I suggest getting a second separate hard drive now let me go just to uh, just to Newegg or, or Amazon here and show you guys exactly what hard drive I kind of just kind of want to give it as an example for you guys. Uh, there is a hard drive called the Western Digital Blue. It's a one terabyte 7200 for 49 bucks. You can usually actually find these sometimes for like 40 or 30 bucks sometimes if they go on a uh, if they go on sales, which they very commonly do, hard drives do. So just try to find the best one terabyte desktop disk hard drive, uh, 7200 RPM. This will work perfectly fly fine yeah honestly i could use one of these right now and i actually am using a western digital black which is a slightly performance uh based version of this but you can do all the way from very very beginner recordings all the way up to extreme like even maybe 4k recordings on this hard drive it'll work fine especially with the settings that i'm going to be showing you today which is a very very lightweight version or very very lightweight recording program and process with the hard drive, you will need a SATA cable, and installation of a hard drive is pretty simple. All you have to do is literally just find a slot in your case. You put the hard drive in, you plug a power cord, which should already be in your PC, um, and then also the SATA cable to the motherboard. You can go look up a five-minute guide of how to install a hard drive to a PC. It's very, very simple. Now, I also want to have you guys download a program called OBS Studio. Again, I've used every program in the book, and this one works great for me, as well as it is free. It's not a paid program. There's no paywalls or anything for any special features it's all open source and so you can customize any part of it with any and you're free to do so as well as uh, there's a lot of special plugins for it so if you're a really really advanced heavy end user then there's a lot of longevity to this program a lot of customization that you can do 
So once you open OBS, it's going to look something like this. This is just my version, so yours might look a little bit different in terms of like it's probably not in the dark theme. It probably doesn't have a lot of sources over to the right or scenes over to the right um, or left here. Uh, and so it's going to look very, very blank, and you're going to be like, what the heck do I do? Well, first off, how you're going to start is I kind of want to just let you guys play with this for a second. Uh, go over to the left and click on scenes, and I think you should have a scene one already. If there's not a scene one there, then you can click add, and you can type in scene one. Um, and then you have a scene. Once you click on the scene, once you have the scene activated, like I have test activated right now, I'm going to go over to the right on sources and right-click go to add, go to display capture, and click on display capture. This will capture my monitor. So if I'm playing any game that's like, let's say, on browser, or it's like a flash game or something that's not full screen, this will capture it. And we're not going to really go in, going into like encoding and actual recording yet. I'm just going to be showing you guys this so that you can play with it for a little second. Um, but this is actually how the recording program sees things. And what's nice about this program is that if you have two monitors, I can just slide this program over to the right and watch it on my right monitor as my left monitor is playing a game. So having two monitors is really, really nice for recording, especially streaming on a uh, a gaming PC so this I just kind of wanted to show you guys this because you can also like let's say if you want to make it smaller and let's say you have a two monitor setup or something then you can go and make it a really really professional looking just cut right in between them I can go and record my right display as well here's my right display and so you see another OBS actually right there that's the one that I'm actually recording off of I know we're kind of going into inception here like you're watching the recording of the recording of the recording but you know you could do something like this if you wanted to show both your screens at the same time in a recording and this black box around it this this entire area right here is what the video would look like so if I were to record this and then export it it would look like this we can actually just kind of record it right now just for a second show you guys this little recording here stop it we can go into our file where our recordings are located so this is what the video looks like played back as you can see uh, it's kind of in the same shape that it was in this little box so this box right here is what represents what the actual final video will look like and this I know is kind of maybe confusing because it's video section but uh, we'll we'll be making some similar and easier examples in a second so display capture again will show your display now what if you want to actually show a full screen game you can click right click you can go to add sorry I missed it Then you can go to game capture this is something that will capture an actual game so if I'm let's say let's say playing uh, rust or I'm playing Ghost Recon Wildlands or Battlefield then this will actually record the game itself now if the game does not run in full screen if it runs in something like windowed borderless then you might want to try disabling this and actually just running a display capture because again something like windowed borderless is just actually just running in your windows and it's covering up everything else full screen actually totally disables your entire uh, Windows Explorer Windows background desktop everything and just plays the program by itself which a program in full screen will run better than a program in borderless just because the program is more isolated is the best way to really describe that so yeah it's pretty basic I mean we already have the idea of this is exactly how you record stuff down but how do you really re want to record do you want to record really high-end footage do you want to record just on the side and not really stress your PC too much um, how do you really record without stressing your PC too much and what methods do you have to really do to, to find that good that good solid method of recording but not losing too many frames as you're playing a game I'm gonna make this full screen just so it's easier for you guys and I'm also gonna display or, or turn off this display capture just so it's also not not super confusing and matrixy so we're gonna go over here to settings on the right side gonna go to settings we're gonna go to output this is the uh, this is the tab that you really want to be at the entire time if you're customizing anything in terms of video quality of the actual video um, Here you can select your resolution by the way, so you can select like I have a 1440p monitor So this is going to be 1440p um, You want to select Lansos I don't even know how to pronounce that and also this is your frame rate counter right here So again if you want to record at 30 FPS go ahead if you want to record at 60 you should be able to by the way with any any hardware as long as you have a secondary hard drive you should be able to record 1080p at 60 FPS uh, with this setup but yeah so you can select your FPS and your resolution there but your output is the main tab where you're really going to be changing a lot of the internal uh, codecs and codes of your video uh, this will kind of uh, 
I guess this will decide if your video takes up a lot of space on your hard drive and looks really, really good, or if it doesn't take up too much space, it's a very, very small file, but also doesn't look that good. So here in this tab, on the output tab, we're going to go to the recording little, little button or tab right here, and this is where all the magic happens. You can select your recording path right here. That means that you're going to be recording to a certain folder. Uh, again, this is on my secondary hard drive, so we're going to click Browse. We're going to go to My PC. Uh, and we're gonna not click on the hard drives that have our games on them So let's say local disk C has my operating system as you can see the little Windows icon is there uh, This B SSD has some games on it uh, Mojo has other games on it and this is a big one terabyte hard drive But then the Frankie hard drive is my recording hard drive so this has no other programs on it, and therefore it's the one I want to record to. So I'm going to select the captured folder. You can name the recording folder anything, by the way. Um, and, and that's how you choose which hard drive to record to. Now, we can go into recording format. I usually just do MP4. I think MP4 is the most recognized uh, format out there for any program. It works with Adobe Premiere. It works with Windows Media Player. Um, anything, basically, will run MP4. So just run MP4. Uh, the encoder is the magic part. This is special only if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. If you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, I highly suggest getting one. But also, I believe that this also works with AMD graphics cards as well if you do download a certain plugin. I'm not exactly sure what plugin it is, and I'm very uneducated in that. But this is going to be something that's special just for NVIDIA uh, brand graphics cards, which if you're recording on a PC, you probably want a graphics card, and you probably want an NVIDIA one uh, because of this little thing here. This is the NVENC codec, and this codec is a lifesaver. This codec uses your graphics card instead of your main computer processor to actually render out the footage from your gameplay. Uh, this barely uses any usage actually in your graphics card at all either, so you don't really see that big of a frame rate hit, especially compared to, let's say, running a standard processor-based uh, encoder, and therefore it uses your processor usage, and, and you'll really see some hits to your frame rate then. But in something like the NVNC codec, I seriously don't see a 5% difference in frames at all. So again, this little kind of segment right here is going to be for NVIDIA graphics cards, but if you don't have one, I'll show you what else you can do. So we're going to set the encoder again to NVENC. We're going to go to rate control, and I'm going to show you guys these like kind of three options that you really need to pay attention to. CBR is a standard bit rate. So if you were to, let's say, have a stream going and you needed a stream to only be at a certain bit rate because your internet is only at a certain speed, because internets are limited by their internet speed, you would want something like CBR, because CBR tells every single second of the video to be the same exact bitrate, or within like a very, very small difference of, this, of the actual bitrate setting of the video. So let's say I select uh, CBR, and I want my bitrate to be 4,000 kilobytes. This will be 4 megabytes per second. So that is going to tell the video that with every single second of the video, you can only use 4,000 kilobytes of data. That means that the video can't tell the encoder, hey, uh, this is a little bit more complicated of an image. I want to use a little bit more data. The encoder will say, no, you're using 4,000, only 4,000. That's the hard-coded limit. So CBR is good for streaming, but what I like for actual recording is CQP. What this does, it's basically a, a dynamic bitrate. It goes up and down depending on the complexity of the image. So let's say you're looking at a flat wall in a video game. You're looking perfectly still at it, and it's not really moving. It's not really doing anything crazy. It's just a flat, blank, white wall in a video game. That is not going to take much data to really uh, process. You know, having a gigantic scene of a, of a forest with lots of trees and tree limbs and, and contrast between the sky and the colors of the tree limbs and bark and stuff like that, and all the leaves on the ground and the grasses and the super thick detail of a foresty area and a foresty scene, that's going to be a little bit more complicated. So something like CQP will understand that a scene is complicated and it will automatically raise the bitrate for you. Now, the bitrate's kind of weird, though, because you see 26 here instead of what we had before, which is an understandable 4,000. Um, 4,000, again, is the actual bitrate, so that's 4,000 kilobytes per second is what the bitrate is of this video. But CQP, it just says 26. The most simple way to describe this is that the higher you go with CQP, the worse detail. The lower you go, the less detail. But if you go really, really low, like below 20, you start getting into the placebo range where you can't really see any differences. And also, you start exponentially raising the size of the actual video file. 
I'm going to be showing you guys different rates of CQP right now. Uh, this one is 50. So this one's going to look really, really bad. This is me walking around in Battlefield 1. But it still is very seeable. Like, you can still understand what's happening. It just doesn't look good whatsoever. Uh, here is CQP 35, which is higher than I usually do. And I never really recorded this. But it is much, much more understandable, much more pretty than the other one. Here's CQP 25, which is what around what I use. I, I'm using 26, actually, as a standard right now. But this is CQP 25. And then there's CQP 18. Now, the sizes of all of those clips for around like 30 seconds of footage each was between 20 megabytes and 2.2 gigabytes just for 30 seconds of footage. So that shows you the difference between CQP 50, which is around 20 megabytes, and CQP 18, which is around 2.2 gigabytes for the same uh, relatively like within 30 seconds of each other amount of footage it was that much data difference with both the different types of cqp so again the higher you get on cqp the exponentially worse it gets but the exponentially smaller the the, the file size gets the higher or lower you get on cqp the higher the quality gets but the higher the file size gets which means that you're putting more strain on your uh, hard drive and also your graphics card because your graphics card is rendering the footage. So I think that for professional video, putting it onto YouTube, uh, CQP 26 to around 28 is the best way to go. Now, if you are going to be zooming in on your videos, which means that you're going to be having to rely on that quality to be good even at small distant objects, you might want to put it to CQP 24 or 22. But I really don't think that anything below 22 is even necessary for YouTube just because YouTube's bitrate is already so low that you don't need any higher quality. Recording at CQP 20, or sorry, CQP like 10, let's say, is going to have a ton of data, but it's also going to look really, really good. But once you upload it to YouTube, it'll look just the same as something that's around CQP 28, which is a much lower quality, but YouTube is already downgrading the quality anyways, so it doesn't really matter. It's going to look the same anyways, so I record somewhere in the middle of medium-ish quality because that's what YouTube records it. That's what YouTube looks like at 1080p. So again, you can go look at my past videos just to see the quality, and I'm going to be showing you some footage right here of just footage of gameplay of the past few days that I've had just to show you the quality of the gameplay of CQP 26 at 1080p. Um, recorded onto YouTube at 1080p. Now, all these other settings don't really matter much. My preset is default, my profile is main, level auto, two pass encoding, sure. Um, B frames, two. I don't really know what any of that means, and I haven't actually changed that. It should be the same for you. If, it's, if, if any of these settings are different, don't even change them. Maybe two pass encoding, just try that out, but don't even change any of the lower settings down here if mine are different than yours because um, I don't think that those do really much at all. Now, if you were a person who doesn't have an NVIDIA graphics card, I would just say switch this to x.264. Now, this is a type of encoder that uses your CPU, your actual processor, instead of your graphics card. And this will be a little bit more hefty than most recordings. Uh, I would recommend having a bit rate around, I would say, 10,000 just for recording. Just try out the different bit rates. You can have higher, you can have lower. It's kind of like CQP. I'm not as experienced in the x.264 pro or uh, encoder, but around 10,000 should be able to show your footage pretty well. Um, um, and at 60 FPS at 1080p, that should be enough. You can also go up to like even 25,000 just to make the quality better if you want to. You can go all the way down to around, I would say, 4,000 without it looking really bad. But if you find that your PC is lagging on the X.264 encoder, then you do want to select, let's say, super fast or ultra fast. Now, going all the way up to placebo, this is just going to cause your CPU usage to go way through the roof. I think that you shouldn't even go to fast or fast, medium, slow. I don't even think you should go to those if your uh, processor is good enough. Uh, I think that the best way to really increase your quality is just to increase that bit rate to, let's say, 30,000 will look pretty dang good at 1080p. But yeah, the recommended version of this is, again, that NVE and C codec with your CQP at 26. Now, for streaming, the quality needs to be at a selected point. So I'm just going to do a speed test right now so you guys can see what my internet speeds are. So you just go Google speed test right here. Let me get my uh, my recorder up so I can see what you're seeing. Yeah, so you just go to internet speed test. You just type in speed test. You just click run speed test. So we're going to run a speed test on Google search right now. And as you can see, my download is at 50. My upload should also be at 50. 
Now what this is, this is a megabytes per second. This is megabits per second. So you see that it's 47.5 download and it's about to upload. And there goes the upload around 50 megabits per second. Now, I'm going to cancel this because it, we both figured out it's 50. Now, if we go 50 megabits to megabytes, it'll tell you how many megabytes that is. So that means that I have 6.25 megabytes of upload. Um, now, you do want to know this as well, is that some internet services and providers, or depending on like what router do you have and things like that, your upload speed can go up and down. So it's not always the same. I have a Ethernet cable that goes from my computer all the way to my router. And luckily, very, very happily, my ISP is actually pretty good about keeping their speeds the same all the time, no matter what time of day it is or anything like that. So you do want to kind of figure out what upload you have if you're going to be streaming, because streaming is a very, very internet heavy process. To have a live piece of video moving through an internet system, that's a lot of data all at once. So you do want to make sure that you know exactly how much you can upload before you go back to your OBS to select what type of quality settings you want. So let's say I have 6.25 megabytes of upload. So I know that I can actually put this at 6 to 50, but we don't want to use all of our internet, right? Right? Like we don't want to use all of our internet because if we're playing an online game, we need some speed, like at least I would say half a megabyte per second to really play the game smoothly. So what do we do here? Do we, let's say, cut it down a little bit? Yes. You want to actually cut your bit rate down a bit from that maximum just so that any kind of problems that happen, let's say your internet slows down, let's say someone starts uh, watching a video on your router or something, or let's say your ISP just slows down for a little bit and maybe you get a little bit of a lag spike, you want to lower the bitrate just a tad from your actual upload speed just so you have a safety net, just so you have a little safety pillow of area that you aren't using all of your internet speed. So I would say use about four-fifths of your internet speed just so that you have another fifth there available in case that your internet is going down in speed a little bit. And you also, just depending on what internet like type you have and how, uh, I guess, strong your internet is and how stable it is, you can maybe move it up a little bit higher towards that maximum, or if it's not so stable of an internet service, you might want to lower it a little bit more. So again, I actually usually run my streams at 5,000. This makes sure that I have a megabyte and a quarter of another megabyte per second available for whatever I'm doing. So I could be uploading an image and I wouldn't actually lag the stream. I have my preset to high quality. Um, these, honestly, I don't really know if they do much at all on the CBR codec, especially with the uh, NVENC codec going. But uh, I have this at high quality just so the stream looks good because it is going to be running at a lower bit rate. By the way, if I didn't mention this before, this video tab can control your frame rate, which can go from 60, you can go to 48, 30, 29.97. You can always, you can always stream at 10 FPS too. I bet people would love to watch slideshows. But uh, also, if your stream looks bad because your internet isn't good enough to really stream those really, really high bit rates, like 4,000, maybe even 5,000, then definitely um, lower your resolution by clicking this little thing. You can res you can lower your resolution all the way down to even 720p. And so if your bitrate isn't good enough for your live streams, then you can actually lower it to like 720p. And it'll actually look better than if you put it at a higher resolution because it has less pixels to really spread uh, spread to the to the to the rest of the screen to the rest of the resolution of the screen. So now we're going to be talking about audio. Because if you're a person who just wants to record some gameplay with also your voice mixed in, that might be fine. You might just want one audio track. But if you want to make sure that your voice is perfect and you want to do it professionally and you want to make sure that your voice isn't too loud or that the game is too loud or that the game is overpowering your friend's voices or something, you can put in separate audio tracks for every type of program. So we're going to go over to the audio tab, click on the audio tab here, go to desktop audio device, you're going to put your main speakers here. So I have my speakers, they're the Realtek high definition audio uh, chip basically, and those are actually my headset, that's actually going into my headset because I use a 3.5 millimeter jack that basically just plugs into the computer and whatever is going on the speakers of the computer just goes into my headset as well. So that records all of my gameplay, all of my friends voices, all into one wavelength. Now, if I want to adjust later on the difference between the game audio, my friend's audio, and my microphone audio, I can set up a different microphone line. So this is my microphone line. This is the Steinberg UR22 USB audio interface. This is my microphone, basically. Whatever microphone you plug in should be visible here. So I can select that there, click OK, and here we are. You'll see here that this green bar 
is my microphone and every time I talk it's gonna move a little bit because it's detecting me talking if I were to go play some music let me let me let me find some music so as you can see here now that I'm playing music you can see that the other I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. You can see that the other wavelength is actually visible. So whenever I turn the music up, you'll see that this desktop audio, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller as well, just so you can see it easier. Um, but you can see that the little desktop audio should go up whenever I turn the audio up on this music. And then as I turn it back down, it's gonna go down. So that will record anything that's coming out of your PC. So your friends' voices, your, uh, your game playing and stuff like that, this will record all of that. Now, if I record these things, these two things at once, how do I really like split them in a video editor? How do I know, how do I see them whenever these two like like audio wavelengths are, are put into a video? Do they both play at once? Now, how you set up your audio to export into two different wavelengths is that you have to go to your recording tab and make sure that you have audio track one and two set up. You can also set up a third, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth, but today we're just going to get two. One for your game and your friend's voices audio and things like that, anything that's coming out of your PC. And then also two is going to be your microphone going into the PC. So again, we're basically telling when we click one and two, we're telling that we want to open up two different audio tracks available for any types of audio to go through. When we go to the audio system, we want to make sure that two different audio tracks are enabled. So let's say our speakers here and our microphone here. Now, once we have both of those things done, we want to go to the mixer. And this is where you choose which audio track goes to what. So here you can see my mics slash aux cord and my desktop audio. You can adjust even the balance of left and right here. Um, you can do different offsets in milliseconds if one is a little bit delayed or, or one's faster than the other or something. Maybe your webcam is off a little bit than your actual voice, so you want to you wanna maybe de like desync your voice so that your voice matches what your webcam is looking at you, like looking at what you're saying. Because sometimes uh, in my old stream, I was, I was actually running into issues with people seeing my face move and seeing my mouth move without my voice talking for like a half a second. So I would go in here and on my mic, I would go, okay, about half a second, that's about 500 milliseconds, and boom, it fixed the problem. So that's a lot of different things here. Um, basically, the, the way to work this program is to just explore it, test around with stuff. It'll take a few hours for you to get really, really good at it. Um, but once you kind of figure out the basics, it is one of the best programs out there. So on Mike Ox, we want that to be on number two. Now you can see I checked a little two there, and also on desktop audio, I checked a number one. That means that desktop audio goes all through channel one, so channel one is only going to include desktop audio, while channel two only includes my mic audio. You see over here at channel four, though, that both of them are selected, and that is for my live streams, because live streams, you can't really edit them like you do a video, where once you render the video, the audio kind of mixes together into one single like kind of file or one single wavelength you can't really do that with a live stream because you don't have something to lively render it so you have to mix both of your audio wavelengths at once for a live stream so when I go to the settings tab I go to output and then I go to streaming this one uses only one audio track and that is track four therefore any any problems that you have with audio during a stream too your stream chat will tell you if your voice is too loud or you can just look at your own stream and test it out for yourself but your your audience should be able to tell you if and there's if there's anything wrong with your audio or anything like that um so that should uh just be kind of fixed there so again uh my audio track is on audio track four because in the mixer i'm telling both the desktop audio and the mic to go into audio track four Alrighty, so this is just an example I'll show you guys of how the dual audio works. So when I import this into Adobe Premiere, it comes in looking like this, where there's one video, there's two audio wavelengths here. There's the left and right, left and right, so it looks like four, but it's actually two. Um, and so this is what it sounds like and what I can do if something is too loud. We gotta, we gotta push that main tower. Yeah. And see, I feel like then, like the game audio and like Jamie saying, yeah, it was a little bit too loud. So I'm going to lower that by about, let's say, six decibels and turn myself up by about eh, like three decibels. We got to we got to push that main tower. Yeah. Pretty sure I am under oh, the Drew, water. Here, I'm going to help you. And also, if I accidentally, like, let's say, make a sound by bumping my microphone or something like that, I can just remove it. So let's say I, I think I say something right here. 
No. Ow. See, if I said no, but instead, like, let's just say that that was a bump to the actual uh, microphone, and I don't want that in the video, I can cut that out without having to cut out the rest of the audio. So the audio still goes that back. Hurting you, or... Ow. See, so you don't even hear me say no because I cut it out. So it's a really useful tool um, having multiple wavelengths of audio going. And I think that's really, really good for those professional YouTuber makers. And even if you're first starting out, having something even like Sony Vegas, you can do the same exact thing as I'm doing here. A little bit easier, actually. Um, and overall, it's just really, really useful for making sure that your audio quality is just as good as that video quality. So guys, that is basically it. I know this was actually kind of rather a shorter video this time, but that's how basic this program gets and how easy it is to really set up yourself to be a really, really good uh, video recorder and editor. I see a lot of people uh, starting YouTube channels that are based on gaming or, or starting streaming that just are using the wrong programs, the wrong codecs, things like that, that make their computer lag or make the image quality worse. And so overall, having something like this to help me out um, and, and that's really, really lightweight, but also really easy to use um, and also just very good in terms of quality and what you can really do with it uh, makes it to where this program is an all-around best program for anybody so if you're just wanting to record some background gameplay or if your computer isn't so good or if you're wanting to go really really professional with good looking footage this program can do it all from all the way to streaming to recording anything like that OBS is a very very well suited program and once you learn the basics, you're going to learn your own kind of custom ways that you want to do stuff, your own types of audio setups, your own types of stream setups, things like that are going to come in that are going to help you out a lot. All the footage on my channel for almost probably the past year and a half has been off of this single program. So just for a quality check, you can go look at any of my past videos of the last year and they're all gonna be recorded with this single setup because this has worked perfectly for me. Um, never had any problems with it, never had any issues and uh, hope you guys enjoyed the guide. I'll see you in the next one. If you have any comments or questions, sorry, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to answer any of them if you guys need them. So yeah, have a good day guys, I'll see you in the next one.